So here's the keyboard assembled. This is what it looks like right out of the box after you assemble it and swap out these directional keys. I would like to make the logo up here, which is currently the Mad Cats logo, into my own personal logo that I use for gaming and some of my business stuff. Now you'll definitely need a screwdriver. Um, their Phillips head screwdrivers are, you know, for the primary function of pulling it apart. I have a small flathead screwdriver here to pop the pieces apart gently. The back of the Strike 7 has two USB ports here. For attaching peripheral devices, I attach my um, game pads through that, just so it sort of makes everything one. Um, it also has on the side the two micro USB ports for attaching the actual keyboard elements to it. I um, haven't tried anything else in there. We'll see that in the future, I suppose. Um, there are two Allen wrench pins right here. Those are for attaching the, um, the mounting bracket. There are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, standard screws that I can see. Ah, oh, crap. I do have to take that bracket off. So there's seven seven standard screws. So I will have to take the bracket off. So the case that came with your keyboard, they supply you with this little thing if you don't already have something like this. It works great. And we'll be taking these pins out. Okay, the mounting mechanisms in the back are, there are four smaller screws, and those come out of the, any of the, the um, screw points below the USB adapters. So, that'd be here, 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 and here. And then there's these three longer screws, and they come out up here. One, two, and three. And these two mechanism, these two um, Allen wrench screws, are to mount the bracket on the back here and here. Okay, it's coming up pretty easily. Yeah. All right, sweet. So, on the inside, you can see that the keyboard um, C and B pieces, or the the micro USB adapter parts points, um, are attached to be a ribbon cable to the um, main board here on the inside. So I'm going to use my fingernail and just pop that, I think. Yeah, it's a normal ribbon cable adapter. I'm gonna loosen that up, pop it out like that. Then this thing should slide straight out. It's pretty standard. All right, so just a little ribbon cable goes in that, and then we've got this uh, USB adapter primary point where the power is coming in, um, and that's going in behind here. So we're going to have to take this board off. Um, the board has one, two visible mounting points. This doesn't appear to be attached. That's the spring mechanism for the switches, I think. All right. All right, so you didn't see it right away when I put this thing apart, but there's a, um, it's basically a shield, so it's it's clipping into the bottom board via that plug there. 
So I'm going to slowly try to pry the two pieces apart. So, yep, okay. So I just pulled that little shield up off of there, and you can see the pins going on. So when we put this back together, I'm going to make sure that this goes straight on that so I don't wreck anything. The other side is nothing. I mean, like you've got these two screws that I mentioned earlier right here. Those are just holding the rocker switch in place. You can see that rocks back and forth. And what basically that does is it touches it touches two of these button points and it allows you to do like volume up and down. What we're trying to get to is right up in here. Uh, it's a white panel and there's an LED light there. Um, currently on this side of the board, things that I can see would be an issue are we have the, the LCD mount point here. Um, I think this is actually it. And then one of these is for the touchscreen functions, I believe. Yeah, so this is the LED, or this is the um, LCD connector, and these are the functions for the LCD connector, which is where the touchscreen elements kind of connect in. Um, on this side of the board, there are three screws. Um, I think the best method for this is going to be to disconnect the elements that have to go to the main. Um, touch screen first so we will just pop them apart and it's basically just a loosening <clears throat> and then that ribbon cable will pop out but the hard part is trying to get it out without damaging anything so I'm just gonna ease it out a little bit see if that's coming the little plastic piece from the rocker panel is kind of in the way. Alright, so it's easing out pretty easily here. We'll probably use a pair of needle nose pliers on my assembly. There we go. So there's the cable for the um, uh, control interface for the touch screen. Not sure. Um, seems to be just set on there. I'm going to unscrew these first. See if I can get to it from a different angle, or if it's even necessary. Um, so there's one. Those small screws. And there are three of these small screws in here. So in theory, this should pop off now. All right. In theory. <laughs> Straight up. All right, Ooh, careful. Okay, so that's the back of the LCD screen there in silver. Um, I really don't want to have to deal with this little clip that I can't figure out, so I'm just going to set this to the side, see if I can do this without taking apart the screen. Alright, so this little thing here is it's, it's kind of like a sticker. It's kind of slightly glued. Can't see there, sorry. Um, I gotta hold on to this somehow. There we go. Alright, so it's glued around the outer edges. But we don't want to damage that. But if you just pull it up slowly, you can kind of hear the glue pulling away. Um, just do it on the edges here. Again, if you have small fingers, this might work better for you. Easier. This is the diffuser. We don't want to damage this. All right, there we go. Came off slowly. No residue on the plastic. That might be reusable. 
You can see way down in there is the reverse side of the image that we want to get rid of. Okay, no need to take the little plastic pieces out. You can actually just apply pressure by putting your thumb right on the logo and pressing slowly and slowly and it'll peel right out. And you end up with the logo separate. Alright, so here's the panel on the front and on the back. And what we're going to try to do is take this piece off without damaging the underlying structure. A little bit. Let's see if I can get any of this up. Because it is glued in a yeah, adhesive sort of glue to the plastic on the front. Um, and if I can do this without ripping it, then I can use it as a template for creating the next piece. Um, kind of feel that it's sticky. Plastic is. So let's just keep it from getting scratched. That's why I'm using my thumbnails. Oops. Um, yeah, here it goes. So, not perfect, but you can see a little bit of the residue left on the plastic. And this is the panel that was on the front. It feels like wax paper. Um, they probably did that so it would be a little bit more translucent. I actually am totally cool with it not being that translucent because uh, I think the light's too bright. Um, especially since it's pointed right at your face when you're gaming. Now the cool thing is, if even if you don't have your replacement logo made yet, you can still put the board back together because the only part that really matters for the inside of this graphics thing crap, is these little this little diffuser piece. So I'm just go ahead put this diffuser back in there, kind of reseat it where it was. Um, I'll just use this to tamp it down along the edges there to keep it sealed. And the only reason that's even in there is to keep the light from being like a direct light. Like I said, it's in my opinion already really bright, so I might make the logo a little thicker later. Um, the next step, of course, to fold this back in. You know, if you undid the clip, good on you. I didn't. I didn't want to deal with it. Um, just make sure it's all set and reseated. Everything seems to be set in there okay. Um, okay. Oh so this little ribbon from the LCD control unit. LED, it's probably LED now that I think about it. It's probably OLED. It makes sense. Be lower to the power consumption. Um, don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a little touchy to do by hand. There's a little plastic piece attached to it. It allows you to kind of push that in there. And then it should just clip right into place. Your thumbnail or something. And there we go. So nice and set. Just a check. No damage to the screen. So we're good. The next step is to screw those two, three screws in. You'll find they are the smallest screws that you can find in your pile if you didn't separate them out already. Just screw those right back into place. Nothing here needs to be like wrenched on, it's all plastic, so you know it's just like putting together any electronic component parts. They are, you know, you don't want to crack your board. More importantly, you probably should do this after having food because I definitely haven't done. That and people are gonna laugh because this is totally not like electronic anything. We're not hacking anything really. We're just replacing a sticker, so <laughs> funny. Alright, so those three screws are in there, everything's set. Um I'm gonna put the shield board back on, make sure that the clip here aligns with the pins down there. 
and kind of sets underneath the, the rocker panel on the other side. Okay, so there's a weird little... On mine, there's a weird little nub on the other side of this rocker panel. I have to make sure that I'm lined up with that. I think it's just a, a problem with the plastic, but nonetheless, something I have to deal with. Yeah. Line those pieces up again. Press the shield into place. Make sure these boards, all the buttons line up. Should just snap right into place. And you can hear, if you hold on to that, if everything's working, you can press the buttons and hear them kind of do the little soft click sound. So everything's lined up. I'll put my two screws back in. They went in at the bottom. Um, one kind of right here in the middle. And again, don't screw in too tight because you're just screwing against the plastic. You don't want to thread it or strip it. And there you have it. It's all assembled except for this little extra piece here. So we're going to do that next. Alright, so what you got to do is make sure that this is all lined up. Uh, they have a little divot here, theoretically it's for this, but it doesn't really line up that way. And take your tape, set it in here, the writing on the way, on the, on the, on the top. Okay, press that into place. And once the ribbon cable is in place, use your tab or if your thumb or fingernail or whatever and just press these tabs back in and it'll lock the ribbon cable into place. Yeah. And it's pretty well pretty well set. And then we can just press this down. Make sure everything is lined up. Just kind of Presses back down together. All should fit in. Kind of like that. Don't squeeze too tight around that glass because, like I mentioned, it's not very sturdy. And use your long screws. Make sure they line up. screw these back in here. Once you get one, usually we'll just hold it for the rest of them to fit. But you can kind of feel it get a little bit tighter. And don't over tighten because you don't want to strip those out. The long screws go on the top. Like so. In. All right, and then these short screws will go on the bottom edges. There's four of them.
all together. No damage. Yay. Damage clip on the outside. Up. Make sure these two screws that go in there. Make sure they line up. Now I've got the unit together and as you can see the diffuser is open. Um, when the unit is powered the light comes through there, it's diffused obviously. So the piece that came with it, which is sorry, this would sit like right in here. I don't know why they have these little edges on there. There doesn't seem to be any associated like point. Um, I guess it'd be like here. That's probably just so that people know how to line it up straight. Um, it's sticky on both edges, so it's sticky here and sticky here. So that means you want to make something that's got stickiness on both sides. That's what we're doing next. So what you want to do is go into your favorite picture editor, or just pick a picture or whatever, and make this from point here to there uh, make that about an inch and a half or two inches um, square and then the element that you make on the inside should be basically no bigger than three quarter inches from from point here to point there um, that way you'll be able to make it fit in the middle of that uh, that little disc um, that we had from the, the casing so it'd be like that right yep. So I wanted a little bit smaller because I don't like a lot of light in mine. So I'm going to make it more like that. On the back side of your disc, you're going to want to put a little bit of, of sticky tape. Um, I use double-sided tape. You probably theoretically could use glue or something too. But that's going to hold the whatever logo you make to this device um, or this little lens because there's nothing to clip the lens into the space. It's literally just sitting there. Um, this whole scenario probably could have been overcome by just slipping a piece of plastic down underneath this um, as long as you could do it without damaging this piece um, that might be something that would be easier in the future to try if you want to try to just like push something down underneath there um, I, I, I just hesitated to do that because I knew that you could pop it off from the back end so here's the little disc that I printed out. Um, that's my logo I use for gaming and for a website that I run called uh, Grasping at Creativity. So I'm going to try to set it in there, make it kind of glow, and I'm going to make sure that it's the right diameter first. So after determining it was in fact the right diameter, I put some sticky tape or double-sided tape on the back of this, just along the edges because those are the only places that it's going to be able to touch. Um, and that way this will hold to this and the little lens will be able to stick on top of it. Okay. And then we'll just place the lens on top. Um, just make sure, because you can't get to the back once you've done this, that you've cleaned off this section here. All right, so I cleaned off this side so there's no sticky marks or anything like that. I just used a screen wipe. Um, just to make sure there's no dust in there. And 
setting it in there these line up right, so now it's lined up just pressing it in to make sure that it stays it's basically just using that double sided tape I'm running my finger around the outside edge I know that I'm smearing this plastic but that's okay because it's just going to be you know, cleaned off later and look nice um, don't put pressure on that whatever you do do not put pressure on the glass alright we're going to plug it into the computer see how it uh, looks Get that power line plugged in Hopefully I didn't mess anything up. Oh, there's the Strike 7 logo. And there's the USB line. And you can kind of see it. It looks blue, but it's actually purple. Oh, there's the red. So there you go. That's what it looks like now. It's all lined up. Everything's roughly straight up and down. You can kind of see that it glows a little bit around the edges where the ink isn't 100% opaque because it's just on normal printer paper. Um, if I were to do this in the future, I'd probably use photo paper. And I may do another one, but it seems, seems pretty much the way that I wanted it for now. So, cool beans!